Hello everyone, welcome to testing hot new makeup. This is the video where I test out for the first time on camera some of the hottest new makeup releases. Even though there are already tons and tons of tutorials and reviews on the new Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette, the Rose Edition. I just got mine in the mail from Sephora the other day, and I know a lot of you like to see how palettes work on more mature eyes. I am going to be 49. This is my last year in my 40s. I can't even believe it. The decade has just gone by so fast. But anyway, I know a lot of you want to see how this looks on more mature skin and also on hooded eyes. So I will be using this and I'm super excited. I'm also going to be taking one for the team, I guess, because I know that a lot of you viewers also often have allergic reactions to these kind of tones. Anything that might have red dye number five or carmine, and a lot of you have already told me when you saw my Sephora haul that I do need to be careful and that there is a good chance that I may have an allergic reaction to the shadows. So we shall see. I will also be trying out for the very first time this new concealer from Dior. It is the Flash Perfector Concealer. I have a new blush from Huda Beauty. This is the Cheeky Tint in Proud Pink. Then I also have a new highlighter from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Pillow Talk Multi Glow Beautifying All Over Glow Highlighter in Romance Light. I have a new Shine lipstick from Dior, a new lip liner from NYX, and a new mascara from Revlon. I do not have a new foundation to show you in this month's Testing Hot New Makeup releases. And that's because I've tested so many the first three months of this year. And if you'd like to see my little foundation roundup that I did, that video will be linked down below in the description box. Now with that said, I am going to be using a new to the market foundation that I have talked about on my channel before, but I know not everyone sees every single one of my videos and a lot of you might be interested in this foundation. It's the Makeup Forever HD, the reformulation. So I will be applying this today before I move on to the other new products I have to show you. Okay, I have applied moisturizer and sunscreen to my skin already. I will have both of those that I used listed down below. For those of you that do not know my thoughts on this foundation, you haven't seen one of the other videos where I've talked about this or reviewed it. Um, I really like it. I was surprised that I really like it because the previous formula and also formulas that aren't necessarily marketed towards oily skin and aren't labeled as a matte finish, those have a tendency to just not work for me at all. So the fact that this one does really surprised me. And as you can see, it's a little bit dark. This particular shade is a little dark for me, but that's because I bought it when I was a little bit more consistent with my self tanning, my at home tanning. So I'm going to get back on that. In fact, tonight I think I'm going to use my self tanner. And everyone always asks me what self tanner I like, which one I use. Gosh, there's so many <laughs> that I like. There's one from Saint Tropez, the um, Jurgens Natural Glow. I use the Deep Bronze and it is amazing. And I have been asked, Risa, isn't the Deep Bronze? too dark for you? No, it is not. I like to be as dark as possible. <laughs> so that's why I go for the deep bronze. And that is when this particular shade from Makeup Forever 2N22 actually works really well on my skin. And the reason why I love this foundation so much is because it provides medium to buildable coverage and still looks really really natural on my skin. It doesn't emphasize my pores. It has a beautiful finish. It lasts all day. All right, I have heard mixed reviews of this concealer, this Dior Flash Perfector. I purchased the shade 2N. That is the same shade that I have in the um, other Dior concealer that I like. Here is the packaging. I recently uploaded a video demonstrating a concealer application technique that I saw 
another makeup artist do in a video on TikTok. And that technique involved applying the concealer on your hand first instead of applying it directly from the applicator to your under eye. However, because this actually has a little brush on the end, I'm kind of feeling that the purpose of that is to use it as an applicator. So I am going to use it that way. And then I will take my damp beauty blender and blend it out. So I'm just going to apply to the areas that my circles are the darkest. So just right by the side of my nose and here. And then I'm also going to apply a little bit here for some lift. So far, I think the shade is gonna be good. I may have used a little too much. Let's see, it's blending out very nicely. Now, anytime I demonstrate a concealer in one of these Testing Hot New Makeup videos, I always, at least I think I always, um, put something at the end in a caption, letting you know how it performed over the course of the day. Did it look good after six, eight hours, or did it settle into fine lines and start looking creasy and cakey? And I'm actually kind of pulling down on my eye gently, the way I demonstrated in that concealer technique, just to make sure that I'm really getting into any of those creases. I like this. I really like this. I think it looks really good. For some reason, my lighting just seems super dark. I'm going to adjust it, hopefully for the better, and I don't make it worse. All right, I don't know. Six years on YouTube and I still cannot figure out my lighting. I'm using a little bit less on this side. I'm also taking the sponge and just sort of going over the foundation. I find that doing this gives it a more, an even more natural skin-like finish. Okay, now, last month, in last month's Testing Hot New Makeup, I used the new Huda Beauty Loose Powder in the shade Cherry Blossom, which is the limited edition pink powder, and it sold out immediately. Not because of me, because several influencers across all different platforms were raving about it. So it did sell out. It might still be sold out. But prior to purchasing that powder, I had stopped into a Morphe store a couple weeks ago and picked up, just on a whim, this brightening pink powder from Jaclyn Hill. This is the under eye powder. And again, I don't think this is new, so... I am cheating a little bit in this video and not using all hot new makeup releases, but it was new to me and I actually really like it. And I say it like that because I bought her concealer too and I loved it, but the reviews on Ulta's website were horrible, which really shocked me because I still think it's a good concealer. So that's why I said I actually really like the powder because I don't know about the reviews. They might be bad too, but... I think it's really good. And I am going to hold my skin taut, gently. Again, the key word here is gently. Press that into my skin and look at that brightening. And I don't want to bake, so I want to immediately get rid of any excess because when you are in your 40s and beyond, the last thing you wanna do is let a bunch of powder sit under your eyes, at least in my opinion. And then I'm also putting a little bit here and here. What I like about this powder is that it is pink, but it's not extremely pink. The Huda Beauty Cherry Blossom is a lot pinker than this one. This one just has a slight hint of pink. But as I think you can see, it does have a really beautiful brightening effect. And I just looked up close in my mirror and I think everything is looking really good. Right, I'm just gonna go in with a little Makeup by Mario bronzer. 
just because I have it sitting here. <laughs> my favorite right now is the Gucci bronzer. That was in my Sephora Spring VIB Sale um, luxury recommendations video. It's so good. This one isn't bad. I really like this one too, but there's just something about that Gucci one. It's just so silky and I just love it. it smells good too. Right, I went ahead and did my brows. Last month I demoed one of the new Give by Gwen Stefani brow pencils and I still really like it, but there were no other new brow pencils as far as I could see that launched in the last three to four weeks. So now I'm going to move on to the Patrick Ta palette. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous about my eyes having a reaction to this. So this palette is the same sort of concept as the original Major Dimension palette. You've got two cream eyeshadows over here, which are covered with a little plastic casing. And then you've got some matte shades down here and then some beautiful glittery, shimmery toppers. So I'm going to start with the lighter cream shade in the palette and apply that. Oh, wow. <laughs> I guess I just wasn't expecting how pigmented that was and to get it right in here. <laughs> so this may be a palette that I have to do my eyes first, or at least do my eyes before concealer because I really just went in and messed up that concealer. And oh my gosh, a little bit goes a long way. This does have a lot of, um, pink in it. I could be in big trouble here. <laughs> okay, that's better. So the trick is, if you don't want this much pigment right off the bat, definitely like tap it off on your hand first to get off the excess. So I'm just sort of going to try to move what I have over here, <laughs> over here. That's better. And I'm blending it out towards my temples. It's extremely blendable, so you won't have any trouble with it kind of clinging while you're attempting to blend. I'm going to take my Beauty Blender, just kind of touch up right here, touch up right here. The Beauty Blender actually begin, becomes a little bit of a magic eraser. All right, so now, Let's take this Dusty Rose shade right here. Do these have names? Yes, they do. I will put the name up on the screen. Using a BK Beauty fluffy brush, taking that and just running that through my crease, setting that cream color. But I'm trying not to get too much of that powder on the lid because I want the toppers to stick really well to that um, that cream shadow. So I'm focusing this mostly in my crease. And with my hooded eyes, what I like to do is just look right into the mirror and push in where my crease would be, and then just blend back and forth in this windshield wiper motion. And now I'm taking my favorite brush for my outer corners. This is the Samey Beauty 2.5. I should know that by now, I've been using it in nearly every makeup tutorial for the past three years. So now I'm going to take, I don't think I'm gonna take the darkest shade. I think I'm gonna to go to the next, the second to darkest powder shade in the palette. And I'm applying this the way I usually do, right in my outer corners, just tapping it on. And I do this because my eyes are downturned and I wanna give them some lift. So I angle everything upwards towards my temples. And again, because of the hooded portion of my eye, I wanna make sure I look up, put my chin up and look down into the mirror and stamp into the fold. And as I hope you can see, I'm just really keeping this concentrated on the very outer corner of my eye because I really want the glitter toppers to be the star of the show. And I'm gonna go back with that first brush and just blend it out. Okay, 
So now that that's done, I'm going to take a clean brush and go into the lightest shade in the palette and just diffuse the upper portion of the eye. These are extremely pigmented. I'm not surprised though. The original Major Dimension palette is very pigmented as well. Once again, going in with my Beauty Blender and angling the shadow up towards the tail of my brow. And now I am going to use this beautiful pink topper right here. Ooh, that's very creamy. Feels a little bit creamier than the ones in the original Major Dimension. And I'm gonna put this in the center because I'm gonna put another topper on the inner corner. Oh, so, so pretty. Wow. This is really beautiful. I would wear this to the grocery store, honestly. <laughs> Just because it's so pretty. Now, because I want to be extra careful where I place this next shimmer, I'm going to use a brush and see how that works because I feel like my fingers will be too big to get where exactly where I want it to go. And I'm placing that right in the inner portion. Hmm. No. No. It looks like you've got to use your fingers. So I'll use my pinky maybe, my smallest finger. There we go. Why does that look pink too? Hmm. It looks pink as well. Well, it has a pink shift to it. Interesting. You can slightly see the gold. I'm gonna use another, my other pinky finger for this side. Yeah, it definitely comes up more pink. I really was wishing it would be a little bit more gold. Well, there you go. Once you kind of move your head around, you can kind of see the gold a little bit more. It's pretty. Now I'm gonna go in with the darkest shade in the palette and just sort of add a little bit to the outer corners. Just want to deepen them a tad. Now for the bottom lash line I'm going to go in with this middle matte shade and just run that along my lower lash lines. I did get a little glitter fallout, but not too bad. Okay, I do feel like this look requires a little winged eyeliner, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that with this Stila Stay All Day Liquid Liner. I've been using this for like 20 years. Okay, I've also gone ahead and curled my eyelashes, and now I am testing out this new mascara from Revlon. It is the So Fierce Eyes Wide Open Mascara. It has a rubberized bristle applicator. You know, someone mentioned to me once that the drugstores should show you what the bristles of a mascara, what the applicator of a mascara looks like because I typically do not purchase, or I try to avoid purchasing mascaras with this type of wand. I prefer a traditional mascara wand versus the rubber bristles. So we'll see how this goes. I think some brands actually do show you. Maybe CoverGirl does. I think they all need to get on that and let you know what the applicator actually, what it's made out of. Now I'm not typically a huge fan of Revlon mascaras. 
I have to be extra careful with this type of mascara wand because I often will poke myself in the eye with this kind. I like it. It's giving me a lot of separation. It's very black. Of course, I did buy the very black shade. I've gotten a little bit on my lid. Oh, I like it. Huh. I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna wait for that little spot to dry and then I'll just flick it away. I am honestly shocked at how well this mascara held the curl. I'm loving the mascara so far. Now that does not mean that I'm not going to be applying falsies because I do have some new ones here from Lily Lashes, the Sephora collection. This is a new style to me called Beverly Drive and they said, the description online said that these are a great style for hooded downturned eyes. Okay, for blush, not only do I have this Huda Beauty cheeky tint to try, I also purchased this palette from Violet Voss. It just looked so pretty on the Sephora website. So this is the palette. You know, it kind of reminds me of a BH Cosmetics palette. So I'm gonna start with the Huda Beauty and then we'll see if I wanna add any more color by using one of the, like maybe that pink shade in the palette, I'm not sure yet. All right, so this is the shade. It's a beautiful, gleaming pink, and I'm going to apply it right here. Ooh. I'm actually just gonna blend it out with my fingers. Very nice. It didn't really mess with my foundation. Doesn't seem to be messing with my foundation. And because it's a tint, you know, it's not supposed to be super, blushy. I'm making up my own words now. It's just supposed to be a hint of color. And that it is. This would be great for an everyday, maybe no makeup makeup look. I do feel like this look needs a little bit more color. I suppose I could keep layering this, but I don't know if I want to. You really don't need a highlighter with this either, although I have a highlighter to use, so I will be using one. I am gonna go in with this baby pink blush right here. And just add a little bit more color to my cheeks. Okay, this is very pigmented. The last thing I needed was another pink blush. But here I am, trying another bright pink blush. Okay, now I'm going to use the highlighter from Charlotte Tilbury called Romance Light. Using a Real Techniques brush, I'm actually going to just swirl into all the shades. Pretty. Charlotte Tilbury knows how to do highlighters. And then what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the white from the highlighter Put it right in here. Ooh, yes. Yes, I like this. Let's just add more glitter to this look. It is a little bit glittery. It's hard to tell on camera, I think, but it does have, some of the shades have a little bit more of a glitter particle to them. So some people might like that, some people might not. All right, the face is done. Now it's time to try this lip liner from NYX. It's in the shade Global Citizen. I had to go to several different Ulta's to find this particular shade. They had the testers out. And of course, this was the one that looked the most like what I would gravitate towards. And of course, behind the tester, all the actual products in the shade were gone. I have a love-hate relationship with the plastic on these things. Like, I get that they need to be sealed and I'm happy that they're sealed, but does anyone have a trick? Like, I know they're perforated. I can see the perforation, but it's only maybe one out of every 10 times I have packaging like this that I can actually easily get it off. Excuse me while I sit here for 10 minutes trying to open a lip liner. A tweezers. There we go. 
So this is the Line Loud lip pencil. And yes, this is kind of the perfect lip liner color. It reminds me a lot of my new favorite Anywhere Caffeine from Makeup Forever. Obviously this is a lot less expensive. It glides on so easily. It's so smooth. Okay, next up is the new Dior Addict Shine Lipstick. I purchased the shade 331 Mimi Rose. Look at this packaging. So pretty. I ordered this purely based on the online descriptions and sometimes those descriptions are incorrect. At least I often don't think that the descriptions match up with the actual lip color, but in this case, it did. Said it was like a nude peach pink. And that it is. I love it. It seems to have a very light, sweet scent. Nothing overpowering at all. Feels amazing on my lips. And you know what? Using a, I think, $5 lip liner sort of offsets the price of the 30 something dollar lipstick. Okay, here's the look without any false lashes. Love it, love everything. Getting these Lily lashes out of their package and I will show them to you up close. I am definitely going to have to trim these. There is not a single pair of Lily lashes that I do not have to trim for my small eyes. So I take one off, place it on my eyes. These are a little bit more dramatic than I had anticipated. I'm gonna be cutting off a pretty good chunk, almost like half the lash. I kind of hate that, I feel like it's such a waste. These lashes are so expensive and I end up, you know, cutting off half of them. So you know that if I ever come out with a lash line, which I might, they will be affordable, easy to use, and natural looking, and cruelty free. All right, the look is complete. The only thing that is throwing me off a bit is I feel like these two eyelashes are not the same. I did not notice when they were in the packaging, but on my eyes, I feel like this one has more separation than this one. I may have to go in with like a spoolie or something and try to separate this more. That's so weird. I have had this happen before with lashes where they looked mismatched. And that's really frustrating because I definitely, you know, can't return these now. And that's kind of frustrating. But as far as everything else goes, I am loving it all. Well, actually, I wouldn't say I'm loving this Huda Beauty cheeky tint. I think it's okay. I wasn't like wowed by it or anything. I do like this Violet Voss Bubbly Blush for Color Blush Palette. I just feel like it's too reminiscent of a BH Cosmetics that you would pay $8 for versus one that's $39. Even though I purchased mine with 20% off, I do feel like it is overpriced. The new Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Highlighter is beautiful. It does emphasize a little bit of texture. However, that could be because what I used underneath it, the Huda Beauty, also had a little bit of a sheen to it. So I think layering the two together is what's really emphasizing my texture. I think it looks pretty, and I took some photographs, and it photographs pretty, but if you are concerned about emphasizing texture, there are other highlighters I would recommend before this. But if you are a Charlotte Tilbury collector, especially her Pillow Talk products, then you definitely would want to pick this one up. 
the lip color and lip liner. I do like this combo and I like these products individually. I think the next time I wear this lip color, I might use a peachier lip liner versus a brown lip liner. This is an excellent, excellent lip liner. And if you can find this particular shade, Global Citizen, at your local Ulta or wherever you purchase NYX products from, I definitely recommend getting it. I don't hate the combo, I just think I may like it a little bit better with a peachy pinkier lip pencil. But the lipstick itself, I am crazy about it. Absolutely crazy about it. From the time I did that original application to now, I did go and do a couple of things around the house. I filmed a couple TikToks. And when I came back, my lips looked just as you saw, pretty perfect. I didn't really need to go reapply this, but I thought for the sake of the video, what the heck, let's apply another coat. I love it. I love it so much. Speaking of things I love, so far the concealer is looking good. I'm going to keep trying it and we'll update you. I promise you, there are so many people that have asked me what happened to my monthly favorites and fails videos because I did one all last year. I didn't miss a month last year in 2021, but this year I think I only did January and I missed February and March. I 100% will be bringing back monthly favorites and fails at the end of this month. So that is when I will update you on the Dior Concealer, the Revlon Eyes Wide Open Mascara. This mascara is the first one in a long time, the first drugstore mascara in a long time to really impress me. I am going to keep using it and again, we'll update you. But as far as first impressions go, I feel like it gave me length, volume, separation. I didn't poke myself in the eye. It held the curl. So yeah, I am really liking this one so far. And as of now, it is one that I would reach for on a daily basis when I don't want to wear false eyelashes. And last but not least, the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 Rose Palette. Obviously, if you do not like to wear glitter or sparkle on your eyes, this is not going to be the palette for you. So far, I have had no irritation, and I think it's been on my eyes for about an hour right now. I will know probably in another hour or so if my eyes start to feel heavy, and by the end of today, I will definitely be able to see if my eyes get red and irritated, in which case I will sadly have to return the palette, which I hate to do. Okay, as always, all of the products and the shade names will be listed and linked down below in the description box of this video. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you're not already subscribed, I would love it as well if you would hit that subscribe button and join the Risa Does Makeup family. I do upload new content at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me on Instagram and on TikTok under the same username. It's all Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.